Hi, this is Daniela Burgless. There are two types of condominiums on the market, divided and undivided. To understand the difference between these two types of condominiums, Mélanie Raymond met with Maître Nathalie Ricard, a notary and professor at the Collège de l'Immobilier du Québec. Maître Nathalie Ricard, thank you for being with us today. My pleasure. Can you start by explaining what a divided condominium is? Tout à fait. Euh, la copropriété divise. Euh, D'abord, lorsqu'on parle de copropriété, on parle de plusieurs personnes. First of all, when we talk about condominiums, we are referring to many people who hold the right of ownership on the same building. And in a divided condominium, the building has been subject to a division, a legal division. This means that a land surveyor has visited the building in order to divide it and create parts of the building that are called private portions and parts that are called common portions. Les parties privatives sont des parties de l'immeuble qui appartiennent en exclusivité. Private portions are those parts of the building that belong exclusively to a unit owner, while the common portions are the other areas of the building that belong to all of the co-owners. So all of the condominium owners share the common portions based on a percentage determined by the declaration of co-ownership, but the condo owner is the exclusive owner of their own private portion. And can you now explain what an undivided condominium is? En copropriété indivise, comme son terme le dit, c'est indivis, donc... With undivided condominiums, as its name suggests, the condominium building is not legally divided. This means that the co-owners hold a right of ownership on the entire building. There are only common portions in an undivided condominium. Il n'y a que des parties communes dans une copropriété indivise. As the co-owner of an undivided condominium, you are not the sole and unique owner of the ground floor, the second floor, the third floor. You are the owner of a percentage of the entire building. And depending on whether or not there's a co-ownership agreement, it is within this agreement that states which co-owner has the right to live on the ground floor, the second floor, or the third floor, because everyone has a right of ownership on the entire building. In a divided condominium, as I mentioned earlier, there is part of the building that belongs exclusively to the owner, which is not the case for an undivided condominium. What are the main differences between these two types of condominiums? The main difference is that with undivided condominiums, because the building is not divided, meaning all the co-owners hold a right of ownership for a percentage of the entire building, when the time comes to sell this right of ownership, the market is very different in that the mortgage financing is more problematic. Financial institutions ask that the relationship between the co-owners be clearly determined in a co-ownership agreement. And because the law does not make it mandatory for an undivided condominium to have a co-ownership agreement, there are undivided condos on the market that do not have a co-ownership agreement. So when the time comes to sell this share or portion of the condominium, the future buyer often has problems with financing. La majorité des créanciers hypothécaires vont exiger qu'une convention d'indivision soit signée entre les Most mortgage lenders require that a co-ownership agreement be signed by the co-owners, that it be published at the land registry office, and that the agreement very clearly determines the rights and obligations of everyone in order to avoid conflicts between the co-owners in the future. So in terms of a real estate transaction, it's often more difficult to access financing for undivided condominiums than it is for divided condominiums. With a divided condominium, because you are the only owner of your private portion, it's like having three neighboring buildings. When one of the neighbors decides to sell or refinance their property, it has no impact on the other neighbors. So if I'm the owner of the condo that's located on the ground floor and I wanted to sell it or refinance it, this will be of no concern to the owners of the condominiums located on the other levels. So real estate transactions are easier with divided condominiums.
Are there any particularities if someone buys a condo with the goal of renting it out? Is there anything special to consider with regards to a divided or undivided condominium? In terms of renting an undivided condominium, depending on whether or not there's a co-ownership agreement, the decision may require the intervention of the other co-owners to decide whether or not a person can rent their share of the undivided building. You have to look at the circumstances and whether or not there's a co-ownership agreement that allows co-owners to do it by themselves or according to the rules of the civil code, which requires the intervention of the other co-owners to simply sign the lease. But with a divided condominium, because I'm the sole owner of my private portion, I'm free to rent out this private portion. I still need to verify the condominium's bylaws, as they may limit the right to rent. They may also stipulate that I need to provide the renter with a copy of the bylaws so that the condominium's bylaws are enforceable. Thank you for these explanations. My pleasure. Whether it's divided or undivided, condominiums have their own distinct issues that must be addressed during a real estate transaction. We will soon be presenting a video that discusses all of the different people involved in a condominium transaction, as well as their respective obligations. So watch out for it. This is Daniela Verglas, and I will see you next time.